Hey everyone, uh, James from TDB here, bringing you another in between episode. This one is going to be on no particular special topic. I'm uh, just going to be bringing you a regular tea one. Um, so this tea is a tea that is sold by Teas We Like, um, um, which is run by um, a bunch of people I am friends with. So thank you to Marco in particular and the people over there for uh, sending me this sample. Um, and it's actually a tea that I've been exposed to uh, a number of times. And the tea is the 2005 Chen Yunhao uh, Shenzhong Chuangqi. It might sound familiar because I think, I believe Denny and I brought it on to the show um, earlier this year, but it's been a while. It's been eight or nine months. And it wasn't, that wasn't actually the first time I was exposed to the tea either. I'd had it before uh, from a different tea friend. So I've had this tea from about three or four different samples, all of which came from Taiwan. And frankly, it's been a tea that my, um, my own impression of it has changed a bit over time. And I think it kind of shows you why getting repetitions, more than one repetition can be really important to sort of telling you uh, more about the tea and how, you know, sometimes your first impressions are going to be what ends up being the lasting, enduring impression. But other times, it's not going to be. And for me, I found that this tea falls into that latter category. So a little bit about this tea. It's made by Chen Yuan Hao, a boutique Taiwanese producer, um, very much like uh, Shizu Hao or Yangqing Hao. Um, there's a lot of them, so small-ish operation. Um, but pretty well-known vendor based in Tainan in, in the south part of Taiwan. Um, the tea itself is a blend of the six famous mountains, so that's like Yola, Manjuan, um, and the other four. Um, and these are all kind of centered around Mengla County in sort of eastern Shishuangbana, uh, sort of around that Iwu area. Um, so you could simplify a bit and just think of this as sort of a Iwu blend. Um, yeah, and so... Uh, so I have steeps two and three here, trying something a little different, uh, and I might go ahead and boil some water and make steep number four, but first going to take a smell of the leaves. So the aroma for me has a couple things going on. Uh, it is, uh, it has definitely some wood, uh, which is something we would expect. It also has some of those, like, uh, almost like Asian-ish fruits, so like lychee, uh, sort of in that vein. I also get some light florals to it. Uh, and gonna go ahead and drink now. Cheers. So it's a little woody, um, for sure, uh, sort of like that. What is uh, perhaps a little unexpected, especially if you're coming from other Taiwanese producers, is that this tea actually has a decent uh, bitterness to it, which makes it stand out a little bit from what we would think of as sort of stereotypical boutique wu tea, especially ones that are like 13 or 14 years old. Um, and this was something that I think I initially sort of dismissed as a, uh, it's a bit of a negative, but now I'm coming to start to see it at, in, in a little bit of a, um, better light. I think as you brew this tea out, that, that sort of bitterness is going to die down, uh, just sort of gradually steep by steep. Uh, this is steep number two. So it's definitely going to be one of the stronger steeps to it. Yeah. Get a little bit of that fruity taste. There's definitely a little bit of a drying, a little bit of a stringency going on, definitely within the realm of what I would consider pretty normal for poor, and maybe perhaps a, a positive sign towards the future of this tea as well. Uh, I think one of the reasons I found this tea a little difficult to understand early uh, is that it has a darker profile. Um, and a lot of young teas also have this sort of darker profile. And it can be a little challenging in the sense of trying to figure out what is the storage versus not. Um, so I think I initially sort of made, be made a erroneous judgment uh, mentally, at least that this tea was a little bit more wetly stored than I do. Uh, the wet, the spent leaves, and these are not quite spent as we've only done three steeps of them, can help to tell you some of the story, but I can see from here that they're even lightening up 
so for me, after I brew this tea out all the way, it sort of has like a darker green color, um, maybe a light brown. And so that to me indicates that the tea was not that wetly stored, um, but it's definitely advanced a bit. Other indications that it might not be that wet uh, are also that it still has that bitterness and astringency I just noted. So it's not, um, it's still got some real bite to it. Um, and in that sense, it stands out, I think, a little bit from a lot of the Yongqing Hao productions that don't have this same sort of astringent bite. Uh, all right, gonna go ahead, steep number three, guys. I think this is even stronger. It's a little richer. I can even get some creaminess to it. That astringency, that dryness is still there. Um, and for me, uh, these the tea is pretty dynamic, I'd say, steep to steep. These two somewhat similar, but I think it's moving more and I'm starting to feel that sort of like dark, deep intensity to it. Uh, in previous sessions, it's always a bit tricky to evaluate sort of in real time, but I've had some a good body feel, some good chi from it, uh, so in terms of somatics. Uh, the dynamicness of the tea, I think, is another reason that makes it a little bit challenging to evaluate, just because uh, when a tea is sort of constant, you're getting something very similar, steep in, steep out. I think it's, uh, you're just gonna naturally get a little more reps with sort of the consistent nature of the tea. Uh, with this tea, where I've cycled through three or four samples and maybe tried it uh, once or twice per sample, uh, I, it just has, it's just dynamic enough that it, it, it takes a few tries to really get the feel for the tea. So I think it's sort of a humbling experience in some ways and just tells you to sort of approach these things with humility um, that you may not get the full profile of the tea before you go ahead and, and praise it to the high heavens or dismiss it. Uh, okay, so steep number four, um, and I'm just doing this a little bit ahead of time. I'm pouring straight into the cup, so it's going to be a little hotter. I want to give it a um, just a second to cool down. So aroma dying down just a little bit, sort of expected, um, sort of has this like, sort of, I, 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 sticky is not the right word because it's not really an aroma, but it has this sort of like, almost like saccharine floral thing that uh, you sometimes get uh, from the aroma for some of these uh, Shung Pours as they age. Cheers. And I'd say this tea, has actually been pretty well stored. It's It sort of fits that mode where it's definitely aged and it's hard to tell because we're brewing from, uh, uh, I'm not using a uh, Gong Dao Bai, a Cha Hai for this, but it's brewing sort of a orangish red. Uh, so it's definitely aged, but it still retains a lot of that original character. Uh, and for me, it's inducing a lot of salivation. There's a lot of like sort of enduring aftertaste and sort of like back of the mouth. I'd say the texture, the thickness of it, um, it's moderately thick, probably a little bit thicker than your average uh, Iwu Menglao County tea, but uh, it's not a, uh, a, a double lions if you're familiar with the teas we like production or just blast you. Um, so in that sense, for me, it is, it's a little easier to drink. And I, I really do enjoy teas like this um, that sort of fit this profile. So steep number four. So, if anything, this is even stronger than the previous ones, and uh, definitely one to savor. So I don't want to go too fast with this tea, and if you are drinking this uh, without a video camera pointed at you, I do advise you to do the same. But really appreciate that so sort of full body feel, um, sort of the coating of, of the, the aftertaste in the mouth and the throat. Um, so definitely stuff to appreciate. Um, and I also am someone that is naturally inclined towards these sorts of dark Iwu profiles. So for me, it really hits the spot in that sense. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to give this tea a 7.3 rating. So that's really pretty good. Um, that's, um, according to Marco's scale, a great, a holistic success. 
Um, so definitely one that I enjoy. If you get a chance to try it, uh, please do so. I think they sell it. It's not a cheap tea by any means, but if you want to do a cake split or something like that, you can track some people down. Or if you feel comfortable just blind buying it, it's a cake that I definitely enjoy a lot. Um, so check it out at teasweenlike.com. Um, and thank you for uh, watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. And uh, I will see you all next time. Cheers.